Attractions you need to see in Madrid. Full of energy and packed with cultural attractions, Madrid is a modern metropolis that offers a taste of the real Spain. Wide avenues are congested with traffic, but beautiful parks break up the urban sprawl. Madrid doesn't have the traditional charm of Andalusia or the beauty of Barcelona, instead, it is a hub of social life with a happening cafe culture and bustling nightlife. The city is constantly buzzing with activity, and there are so many things to see and do that tourists will be spoiled for choice. The world-class Prado Museum displays an endless array of masterpieces created during the Golden Age of Spain, and the 18th century royal palace rivals the Chateau de Versailles in France. Visitors should be sure to experience Madrid in the evening, when the city really comes to life. Madrilinos love going out on the town, and the Paseo por la Noche, evening stroll, is a cherished ritual. If possible, it's best to avoid visiting during summer when the heat is oppressive. Savvy travelers come to Madrid during the springtime or autumn to take advantage of more mild weather. Spain's capital city, Madrid boasts an impressive array of historical monuments and art museums, as well as pleasant gardens and public plazas. Find the best places to visit and things to do with our list of the city's top attractions. Number 1. Prado Museum. A truly world-class museum, the Prado Museum has a collection of more than 8,000 paintings and 700 sculptures. Among its extensive assortment of artworks are many masterpieces, including celebrated paintings that rival the most famous works of the Louvre Museum in Paris. The Prado Museum displays around 2,300 pieces of the collection in more than 100 rooms on three floors. Trying to see it all in one visit can be daunting, but it's possible to focus on a specific itinerary of masterpieces. The Prado suggests routes, self-guided tours of specific works. Spanish paintings from the 12th century to the early 19th century form the majority of the collection. The assortment of paintings by Francisco de Goya comprises a remarkable 140 works. Also not to be missed is Los Meninas, a depiction of the Spanish royal family of Felipe IV created by Velázquez in 1656. Other must-see works in the Spanish painting collection include The Annunciation by El Greco, Jacob's Dream by José de Ribera, The Third of May by Goya, and The Immaculate Conception by Murillo. Part of the Prado Museum's exhibition space includes a contemporary building, and the renovated 16th-century cloister of the San Geronimo El Real Monastery. These galleries display a noteworthy collection of 17th-century Spanish religious paintings. Tourists will also appreciate the museum's gift shop and the cafe with a pleasant outdoor terrace. Number 2. Bune Retiro Park and the Crystal Palace The Bune Retiro Park, Parque del Retiro, is an oasis of peace in the heart of Madrid. This lush and beautifully manicured park offers an escape from the hustle and bustle of the city. The park encompasses more than 140 hectares and is shaded by over 15,000 trees. Created for the Count Duke of Olivares in the 17th century, the historic park has an elegant ambience with its lovely landscaping and tree-lined paths. During the reign of Isabella II in the 19th century, the landscaping of the park was enhanced. The Parque del Retiro was owned by the Spanish royal family until the 19th century, since then it has been a public park. From the main entrance at the Plaza de Independencia, visitors arrive at the pool in the center of the park. From here, paths lead to the enchanting La Rosalita, Rose Garden, the formal French Jardin de Don Cecilio, and the Andalusian-style Jardines de Cecilio Rodriguez. Built in 1887, the Palacio de Cristal, Crystal Palace, is a splendid cast iron and glass pavilion that houses art exhibitions. The Crystal Palace looks out onto a graceful fountain and reflecting pool. Visitors will find other interesting fountains at Bune Retiro Park including Los Galapagos, the Turtles, El Angel Cato, the Fallen Angel, and La Alcachofa, the Artichoke. A pleasant pastime among locals is going for a spin on a rowboat at the park's tranquil lake. Number 3. Royal Palace and Gardens This grandiose palace is the Spanish version of Versailles, a royal court designed to impress. However unlike Versailles, which is now just a museum, the Royal Palace of Madrid is still the official residence of a monarch, the King of Spain, and continues to be used for official state events. 
The palace was commissioned by Philip V in the 18th century. The majestic neoclassical facade is crafted entirely from granite and white Colmena stone. The facade's ionic columns and Doric pilasters are based on drawings that the sculptor Bernini originally intended for the Louvre in Paris. The balustrade features statues of Spanish kings. The most striking aspect of the interior is the imposing staircase at the entrance hallway, with a fresco of the triumph of religion and the church that leads up to the main floor. Throughout the palace, masterpieces of art decorate the walls, paintings by Velázquez, Goya, Rubens, El Greco, and Caravaggio, and exquisite Flemish and French tapestries. The King Charles III apartments are among the most beautiful rooms in the royal palace. These rooms are adorned with refined decor of the Enlightenment era. A masterpiece of Rococo style, the Salon del Trono, throne room, is adorned with frescoes by Tiepolo including the greatness of the Spanish monarchy, one of his finest works. Still used for state ceremonies, the throne room is clad in sumptuous red velvet and decorated with valuable tapestries, mirrors, furniture, and chandeliers. Number 4. Plaza Mayor. This elegant 17th-century plaza was built during the reign of Philip III and used as a center of commerce and municipal life, as well as the scene of ceremonial events such as the proclamation of a new king and the canonization of saints. The square also served as a venue for bullfights, dramatic performances, and nightly tournaments. The Plaza Mayor took on its present appearance after a fire in 1790, when the corners were enclosed and the nine entrance arches were constructed, linking it to Calle de Toledo, Calle Mayor, Calle Postas, and others. Today, the Plaza Mayor continues to be an important gathering place in Madrid. The expansive cobblestone square is a pedestrian area, surrounded by outdoor cafes and atmospheric restaurants shaded by its arcades. In the evenings, the square takes on a lively ambience and is a popular hangout spot for both tourists and madrilinos. Number 5. Puerta del Sol, the heart of the city. The Puerta del Sol was named after the sun emblem on the old city gate, which formerly stood here. This spacious town square aligns with the rising sun. Besides being a hub of public transportation, with several bus stops and metro entrances, the Puerta del Sol is also the kilometer zero point from which all distances on the Spanish National Road Network are measured. The Puerta del Sol has been the scene of many historic events, including the Spanish resistance to Napoleon on May 2, 1808, and in 1931, the Second Republic was proclaimed here. Nowadays the square is a place to hang out and enjoy life. Lined with shops and cafes, the Puerta del Sol is still one of the liveliest squares in Madrid. Just off the Puerta del Sol is Madrid's largest department store, El Corte Ingles, which sells everything from clothes, shoes, and swimsuits to traditional Spanish fans. Also nearby is La Violeta, an old-fashioned confection shop that offers the Madrid specialty of violet candies. Number 6. Museo Nacional Centro de Arte Reina Sofia. Opened by Queen Sofia in 1986, the Museo Nacional Centro de Arte Reina Sofia is Madrid's avant-garde center for contemporary art. The sleek modern building was created by the architect Antonio Fernandez Alba and has features that recall the Pompidou Center in Paris, especially the three glass towers that house the elevators on the outside of the building. Another wonderful surprise to visitors is the charming garden in the inner courtyard filled with imaginative sculptures. The Museo Reina Sofia contains over 23,000 artworks in its collections. In its thorough representation of Spanish modern and contemporary art, the collection includes remarkable masterpieces such as works by Joan Moreau, Pablo Picasso, Salvador Dali, and Alexander Calder. The artworks are displayed in various rooms spread out in a vast exhibition space of 39,000 square meters. Number 7. Fuente de Sibeles and Gran Valle. Standing in a major traffic intersection, the Fuente de Sibeles, Sibeles Fountain, is one of the most emblematic monuments in Madrid. Lifelike statues depict the Roman goddess Sibeli riding a lion-drawn chariot. The fountain was created in 1782 by Francisco Gutierrez and Roberto Michel with the original purpose of providing water for public use. 
Behind the fountain is the Palacio de Sibilis that houses the Centro Centro Cultural Center, which hosts art exhibitions and workshops, conferences, and concerts. The Centro Palacio de Sibilis has two restaurants, the Colección Sibilis Café and the Palacio de Sibilis restaurant on the sixth floor, an elegant dining establishment with spectacular city views. Visitors can also admire panoramic vistas from the Mirador observation deck on the building's eighth floor. Nearby, Via Calle de Alcala, is one of Madrid's most popular shopping streets, the Gran Via. Tourists will find many restaurants, hotels, and theaters on this bustling street. Just off the Grand Via on Calle de Javalanos, the famous Teatro de la Zarzuela presents ballet performances and classical music concerts, including renowned performances of Zarzuela, a unique type of satirical opera with songs accompanied by classical Spanish guitar music.